Yo, Adam Saxon here with Guy in a Cube, and in this video, we are going to look at the different options to embed Power BI. Stay tuned. Thanks for taking time out of your day to watch this video. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more great videos from both Patrick and myself. As with most videos on this channel, the reason that this topic comes up is because we get asked a lot of questions on it. And embedding is absolutely an area where I get asked a ton of questions. There are usually a few key steps in the journey that people get caught up on. And so I wanted to go through these and just clear the air and hopefully allow you to better understand which option to pick and what steps are needed to take during that journey. Let's talk about the two main scenarios that are used for embedding content from Power BI. The first is embedding for your organization. This is kind of like extending powerbi.com itself. We are allowing users to individually authenticate to the service and they can see what they have access to. Things that fall in line with this are items like the SharePoint online web part, embedding into Microsoft Teams, that is embedding for your organization. Each individual user is expected to log in. The other scenario is embedding for your customers. This is more aligned with like an ISV type scenario. In this case, the application, the end users for that application, the authentication for those users are handled by the application itself. The end users don't need to know anything about Power BI and they don't individually sign into Power BI. They sign into the application. So this may be like a reseller of a website. All right, so we've got embedding for your organization. We've got embedding for your customers. I'm gonna label embedding for your organization as powerbi.com, and I'm gonna label embedding for your customers as Power BI embedded. So when you see those two, that's what I'm talking about. Now I'm gonna go through the steps that are used to embed content for each of these items, and I'm gonna compare the two. We're just gonna walk down the list, and hopefully this will clear up the confusion points that are usually hit on this journey. From an API perspective, both use the same APIs, both use the same REST APIs, and both use the same JavaScript SDK that's used for interacting with that embedded report. There's no difference between the two. In terms of the PBIX file, your report that you create in Power BI Desktop, you upload that to the Power BI service itself. It goes into a workspace inside of PowerBI.com. No difference there. The one difference on the Power BI embedded side is that PBIX file has to exist in an app workspace. Whereas for PowerBI.com, that PBIX can be in a personal My Workspace as well. When it comes to capacity, whether that's Power BI premium capacity or the Power BI embedded capacity that you get from Azure, capacity may be involved in both scenarios. And we'll come back to that in terms of when you need capacity and how that comes into play. But just know that it could be involved in both scenarios. Okay, so we're gonna develop our application that we're gonna embed these items into. From a developer standpoint, the first thing we need to do is register an Azure Active Directory application for what we're gonna create. This can be done from dev.powerbi.com slash apps. And we're gonna do this in both scenarios. This is needed for both Power BI.com and Power BI Embedded. Here's where the differences are. For Power BI Embedded, we have to choose the app type as native app. Even if you're creating a web application, you have to choose native app. And I'll talk about why in a second, but just know that it has to be native app. For PowerBI.com, it can be either option. When you choose native app, you're only gonna get a client ID, whereas for web app, you're gonna get client ID and a client secret. So you'll need those for your configuration in your application when you're actually authenticating to Azure AD. For the Power BI embedded side of things, after we register our application in dev.powerbi.com slash apps, we need to do an extra step. This is the grant permission step. This is documented out in the Power BI documentation. I'll have links for that down in the description below. There are extra permissions you have to add and then you have to select grant permission. Now, the reason we chose native app and the reason we have to do the grant permission step is because we need to grant those permissions beforehand because on the Power BI embedded side, we're gonna be using a server side login and there is no user interaction. So they can't hit that, yes, I consent to these permissions that you'll get on the powerbi.com side of things if you chose web app. And so to get around the whole, hey, I need to hit yes, I consent, or I agree to these permissions, we need to do grant permission. So this is basically from the server side, we're saying yes, we're ahead of time, we're gonna say yes, I consent to these permissions. So that step is absolutely needed. If you ever see an error message when you're embedding that says something to the effect that consent hasn't been applied or uh, something of that nature, 
know that you missed this grant permission step and check out the link down in the description below for how to actually go do that. It has to be done in the Azure portal. All right, we've registered our application for either Power BI Embedded or PowerBI.com. We've got our client ID. We may have our client secret if we're doing this for PowerBI.com. Move on to the next step. Next up is we have to authenticate to Azure Active Directory. You may also say we have to authenticate to Power BI. This is done using the Azure Active Directory REST APIs. And I wanna talk about REST APIs here real quick. I get a lot of questions from people that are trying to do this outside of .NET. We have .NET SDKs for both Azure Active Directory and Power BI, but what if you're using something like Node.js or Angular or Python or something of that nature? We don't have SDKs on the Power BI side of things. Azure Active Directory may have items for you. So be sure to go look up that for Azure Active Directory for authenticating to that. So, but the first thing we have to do is authenticate to Azure Active Directory. Like I said, these are REST APIs. So if you don't have any SDKs, just know you can do the raw REST API calls themselves. And I'll link down below to a documentation on how to actually make those REST API calls for Azure Active Directory. There is steps on how to do this. It's a two-step process, but know that we do have documentation on how to do it. It is possible to do with just the raw REST API calls. Okay, so we're gonna authenticate to Azure AD. The goal of this is to get what's called the auth token. This is one of the two tokens that you may need. We absolutely need that auth token. And this is done for both Power BI Embedded and Power BI.com. The difference here is that on Power BI Embedded, this is gonna be using what's called the master account. This is a user for Power BI that is stored on the server side itself. This is the proxy account that everyone's gonna go through. Whereas on PowerBI.com, each individual user is gonna authenticate to Azure Active Directory and get their individual auth token. Those are the differences between the two. Now that we have our auth token, we can now make calls to the Power BI REST API. Like I mentioned before, there is a .NET SDK available for Power BI. There is no SDK available for any other platform. So if you're using another platform other than .NET, you have to make the raw REST API calls. An example of this would be get report. We're gonna get our report ID and we're gonna get an embed URL for that report. That comes back from the REST API call. Now what's different here between Power BI.com and Power BI Embedded is for PowerBI.com, we can just go ahead and use that embed URL because we've authenticated with our user. For the Power BI embedded side of things, we do not, the individual user that's using the application, the external user, hasn't authenticated to Power BI. So in order for this to work, we have to generate what's called an embed token. This is the second token that you need. This is, the embed token is only used for Power BI embedded. And there is a REST API called generate token that you call to get the embed token. The embed token can then be used with the JavaScript APIs to actually embed the report successfully. Okay, during the development of your application, you're gonna be making combinations of REST API calls on the server side, and then using the JavaScript API on the client side, and you'll go through and develop your application. At no point do you need capacity whether premium or Azure Power BI embedded capacity during the development of your application. The APIs will work. You can go ahead and do that from a development perspective. Now it's time to move to production. This is where capacity may be required. For PowerBI.com, you don't necessarily need capacity to move to production. If all of your users are pro users, you're good to go. You don't need capacity. If you also want to allow free users to interact with that content, that's when capacity is required. So in order for free users to interact with embedded items that are coming from PowerBI.com, we have to back that workspace with premium capacity. Then free users can absolutely go ahead and use it. This is true for using the SharePoint Online web part. This is true for integrating with Microsoft Teams or just integrating inside of your own application. Also note that if the content is coming from an app workspace and you back that with capacity, free users also have to be added as members of that app workspace in order to have permissions to get into content in that workspace. So that's also required. On the PowerBI.com side, the capacity that you pick has to be a premium capacity. So this can be an EM SKU or a P SKU on the Office side. It cannot be an Azure SKU. So you can't use an Azure SKU from Power BI Embedded when you're embedding for PowerBI.com. For Power BI Embedded, capacity is a requirement. You have to back your app workspace with capacity when moving to production. In this case, any of the capacity SKUs, whether it comes from Azure, 
with Power BI embedded, or it comes from Office with the premium SKUs, EM or P. Any of those SKUs can be used when embedding for your customers or using Power BI embedded approach. For the Power BI embedded scenario, it is recommended that you use the Azure SKUs for Power BI embedded for your capacity. This gives you more flexibility in terms of billing and it aligns with other Azure services that you may be using. So you can go ahead and use that. There's nothing stopping you from using the Office SKU, so if, if you choose to do that. Okay, did that answer your question on the differences between the types of embedding with Power BI? Which one do I use and what do I need to do? If not, go ahead and leave that down in the comments below and let me know. Also, sh we can share that out with the rest of the community and hopefully that will answer their questions as well. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button for more great content from both Patrick and myself. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.